Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Kevin from The Bat Productions, and today, got a really cool, exciting video for you. I haven't done a Game of Thrones What If in a little while, but you know what I thought? It would be a great time to really kind of do one of these, because I usually think they're pretty fun. But creatively, I've wanted to try to attempt some other things. As of late, I'm trying to start up a wrestling channel, which is pretty fun. Uh, but you know how it is, I always kind of get pulled back into Game of Thrones no matter what. Eventually I'll get to The Witcher, but I'm not quite there yet. Today is actually going to be one that's kind of a reboot of one I did maybe like the first video that's ever on this channel that was a Game of Thrones what if. It was what if Oberyn Martell lived and was not killed in the end with the mountain? What would have happened? What would have changed in the end of Game of Thrones? Now I watched my old video and it's not very good, but I think this one has the potential to be a lot better even if some of the content is the same, but there's a total left curve that you, you can't see coming. You can't. But for today, I want to let you know that I have a sponsor for this video. This video is sponsored by Manscaped. They sent me all kinds of amazing goodies, including these set of boxer shorts here, XL, because I got some love handles. Also, this really wicked t-shirt that has the amazing slogan, your balls will thank you. Newspaper, so when you're trimming your nether regions, which is really kind of what they're all about, this is right below. You can catch it all including some creams and of course the crown jewel, which is the lawnmower 2.0. This is the thing that will get it all clean without being trimmed up and nicked too much. I can't wait to try it out. In fact, I'm gonna... I think a lot of me is actually pretty trimmed right down the middle. I look a little weird, but I mean, for a small guy that's meant for the genitals, not so bad. But that's it, if you wanna get some of this stuff, all you have to do is click on the link down below in my info section and also use my promo code BAT20 and you will get a percentage off your order in the next go around and support this company that is pretty hilarious, to be honest. I don't take many sponsorships, but I saw this one come up and I was just like, you know what, I have to do something called Manscaped. I'm a man, I like to scape every once in a while. So I thought I'd share it with all of you. Okay, back to the main video here. We have, what if Oberyn Martell actually beats the mountain in combat in Game of Thrones Season 4? What would have really changed? First, immediate stuff, I could see Oberyn Martell winning, killing the mountain, and then he just flat out takes off the mountain's head. That's something I could see him wanting to do to kind of prove it, and plus, at this point, the mountain has tortured him for such a long time in his family that he would really want something like a memento to take back with him when he does go back to Dorne. Now, in the show, Oberyn had kind of a public face-off against Tywin right before he ended up dying. I think that would still happen, but that's something that would kind of fade away. Now, it wouldn't fade away permanently for either man, but at least in that moment, it wouldn't lead to a point where like he took the spear and chucked it into Tywin's heart, or Tywin's like, guard, surround him and kill him right now. Like, I don't think it would end that way. It would eventually go away and Tywin would make his plans, but it wouldn't go anything too far right there. Tyrion would be released because he won his freedom thanks to Oberyn Martell winning, but he wouldn't go right away. Of course, he would get out, he would try to do make goods, but his family would still be trying to kill him. Tywin would probably still be trying to find a way to do it because he had a perfectly orchestrated setup with this whole Joffrey death. But of course, Cersei is still believing that he's the one responsible, so they're going to try to kill him. I think Varys could still help Tyrion get out of the city and he would go off to Marine as he was supposed to. He could even possibly even cross paths with Jorah like he did on the television show and it'd still end up pretty much the same way for him. It'd be a big win for Varys because Varys is still on board with Daenerys being on the Iron Throne so he could get Tyrion out of King's Landing away from Tywin's fury and Daenerys would get the advisor that she is looking for. And speaking of people leaving King's Landing, Oberyn Martell books it out of there. I know he is on the small council, but after this, Oberyn knows the deal. He's not stupid. In a moment of hatred, yes, he can act a little dumb. But once it is all done and the dust settles, he goes right back to Dorne. He takes the mountain's head with him, packs up, because he's got some Targaryen to restore in the rest of Westeros. So he's got to get out of there before Tywin does something like kill Oberyn in an accident. Oh, obviously Tywin gets to live because he's not killed by Tyrion after being uh, sentenced to death. So Tywin would get to live and kind of move forward and regather his house. Of course, Shay also doesn't die. I mean, who really cares though? It's only Shay. No one really cares about that character other than Tyrion. With Tywin around, he continues to mentor Tommen, who's on the Iron Throne after the death of Joffrey. Now, Marjorie Tyrell, of course, is still going to be the wife of Tommen. They are going to work with Tommen and try to raise him. Tywin and Marjorie in their own separate ways, and Cersei's going to be sitting in a corner, sulking all kinds of sadness because of this event. This is going to drive Cersei into the arms of Jaime Lannister once again, because she was really detached from him at that point. But Cersei, unable to have power and being neglected by her child, she is going to look to the person that she's always looked to in times of trouble 
is going to be Jamie Lannister, which he'll be happy about at least four times. Also with Tywin Lannister around, big thing, the High Sparrow is not installed as the High Septon. The Faith Militant are never armed by Cersei to deal with any kind of problems. Tywin would never allow the Faith Militant, even if he didn't agree with the behaviors of these people, he would not have them go into all these places like brothels and tear them up because he knows how a functioning society will work. Also, people need distractions. So, in order for that to not happen, they cannot be installed. He would have no reason to arm them. They wouldn't have a problem with the Tyrells were taken over and put into prison. That is what Petty Cersei did. So that wouldn't be the case. The Tyrells and the Lannisters, their relationship would still be good and not strained. And speaking of Cersei Lannister, she would not be taken to Highgarden to deal with the marriage of her and Laris. Now, she had a big threat against Tywin right before he was killed, saying, I'll let everyone know that Jaime and I are hooking up and Tommen is our illegitimate child. And Tywin believed that. I think this is one of the only times that he would actually listen to what Cersei says and he would back off from this, which is kind of a win actually because the Tyrells didn't want to marry Larsa Cersei anyway. So I think that's just kind of a big fat W for the Tyrells in this whole scenario. Cersei would sit around and sulk, but she doesn't have to go to Highgarden. With Tywin and Marjorie there and the Tyrells happy, I actually think that Tommen rules pretty happily for at least a little while. The timeline's gonna be similar on the television show as to when the White Walkers come, so it's basically during that time period. But I think he'll rule fairly peacefully with a bunch of chaos around him between Cersei and Marjorie and Tywin trying to pull back and forth. But we all know that Tywin Lannister is typically gonna win that kind of thing. Although Marjorie is giving him some sweet sex in, so that does complicate things a little bit in figuring out who's gonna have the most influence over the little guy. This will get complicated eventually because they don't really have a lot of enemies kind of present out there right now. I mean, they have tons of enemies, but about to come down on them. They know the Martells will probably make a move at some point after over and left. However, they also have the Tyrells who have been battling the Martells for a long time. They could possibly kind of stave them off and the Lannisters and the Tyrells could probably take out the Dornish. But really the kind of the issue is they're gonna find out that the Targaryens are coming eventually and the Martells are probably going to wait for Daenerys Targaryen to come over to Westeros. They have been really in on this idea of a Targaryen restoration, kind of like Lord Varys. Now this is something that's really from the books, but it looked like it was building toward them anyway. Now with that, the word comes about from across the Narrow Sea that Daenerys Targaryen is rallying to come to Westeros very soon. So Tywin is trying to get his people together, particularly the Tyrells and also the Lannisters, and of course all the bannermen down in Highgarden and uh, the Reach are really important. He tries to get them together and really just waiting to prepare for all of this. Now up north, obviously there's a lot going on, Really, that plot's probably gonna stay very similar because the Boltons are up there and you know, yeah, the Tywin would love their army, but also they're not gonna be able to just leave Winterfell and they're not gonna help the Boltons keep Winterfell either. That's something that Roos made very clear. So I don't think that's really gonna change all that much. Jon Snow probably still takes it and of course they have to fend off the White Walkers eventually, but we'll get there. While trying to gather his troops together, Tywin reaches out to Euron Greyjoy before Euron even has the chance and to come and approach Tywin Lannister about helping them out. Which of course he offers Cersei's hand in marriage, which Cersei's probably not going to accept, but that's beside the point. Tywin is going to offer it anyway, knowing that he may not have to make good on it no matter what with what's coming up. So he offers that out, Euron accepts, of course he does, why not? Not just because she's Cersei, because she is powerful and he has no other game left in town, essentially. So he says yes. Daenerys makes her way across the Narrow Sea. It takes a little bit longer because she doesn't have as many ships as she did on the television show. She wouldn't have the Tyrell ships and she also wouldn't have the Martell ships necessarily by that point. Although I guess she could if the Martells were that forward. But really she'd be working with the slave ships and the Theon, Yara, Greyjoy ships. And with battle ranging on, there would be of course some good fights back and forth. I mean Tywin as a commander, he'd be great. I don't know if he'd be in the field, but he'd be pretty terrific. I mean really what would happen is, kind of like what happened on the television show, where they would go back and forth and there, you know, there'd be some kinds of wins, some kinds of losses, some hollow wins, like for example, when Daenerys' armies took Cashley Rock, that really wasn't a win because they kind of just had it abandoned anyway. The only difference is I think that if Tyrion were kind of help planning the battle, I think that he would see what's going on with Highgarden being one of the main allies of the Lannisters and he would encourage Daenerys and the Greyjoys to really go down to that location and take that place because that's where the money is and that's also where all the food is. So I think that's what would possibly happen. The Iron Bank probably wouldn't play much of a role in this whole deal um, unless the Tywin Lannister tried to get another army, but I don't think they would give it to him. So that's where I have to say that I think they would go to Highgarden, maybe they would get it, maybe they wouldn't, but either way, 
I think that it's going to end up with some kind of massive dragon battle, kind of like Field of Fire 2.0. Eventually it comes to a head, as it did on the television show, where you have all these important people meet in King's Landing in a dragon pit. Now, first of all, I could see a scenario where Tywin would have just had everyone killed who showed up that was an ally. However, I think that would be his plan when he sees the idea of like a broken, like a zombie bone or something like that. Because Tyrion would think that Tymo would need to see that too. If he talked about like some shadow cat or something, Ty he'd be like, Tywin would never, he would never think this is legitimate. So they would have to bring kind of a zombie like they did on the television show. Once Tywin sees that, I think Tywin will be scared and would believe it, but I think right away he would actually answer how Cersei did on the show. And it drives me nuts to say that because I think Tywin is the smartest character on the show and I think Cersei's a freaking idiot, okay? So when he has the same reaction as Cersei, I'm right away, I'm like, great, this sucks. But, but this is where I go on a little bit of a left turn. I think Tywin's basically like, listen, you all can go deal with them up north. We'll deal with whoever wins, either the zombies or you all as northerners. That's it, we'll deal with that. And this is where the cool thing happens. This is where the little bit of a left turn is. Tommen steps up and is like, no, no, we are not the realm if we let the north fight off this. We are the living and I'm the king of the living, not you. So basically Tywin and all them, they go, okay, they leave with it being happy. But of course, Tywin's not actually happy. Tywin tries to strong arm him. Before he even gets it out, Tommen's like, throw this guy in the cell. He throws Tywin Lannister into the black cells. So Tywin Lannister is freaking out. The first time Tywin has been super powerless in a really long time, maybe ever, and he has to be put into the black cells and he's sitting there while this is happening. While they're planning to go up north, the Tyrells are on board because the Tyrells are connivers, but they're also very much like just good, okay? They're a good house for the most part. So they're on board, Marjorie's on board, she's proud, she gives them some sweet sex in. And Tom, he's really happy, good old Tommen boy, or Tommy boy, whatever you want to call him. That's going to be happening in, in the plans, everyone's going to fight together, they're going to fight at Winterfell, roughly the same amount of people are going to die as they do, you know, kind of like the barracks of the world, the Joras, the Theons. And also, just for good measure, let's throw in Randall Tarly and Loras Tyrell. They would be good people to throw up there and they'd be good deaths for them. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention, when Tommen made his declaration that we're going up north, Euron takes his navy and he leaves. Now, this did happen on the television show, but I'm serious when I say this. He just leaves. He's not a ruse to get the Golden Company. He's just gonna go, because he's like, listen, I'm not into this, okay? I'm out. After they win the Battle of Winterfell, the King's Landing army returns back to the keep they go to the Red Keep and walk in, and this is like Jamie and Braun and a bunch of other people. Braun's probably still sticking around by this point. They go in there, they walk into the throne room, everything seems normal, but when they come in, you have Euron Greyjoy sitting on the Iron Throne with a crown upon his head, playing with a body part of Tommen's. Tommen has been murdered sitting in the Red Keep while people have been off fighting, saving everyone from the dead. We thought the Greyjoys were gone, but they weren't. Euron was just plotting to come back and take the throne for himself. Now, what's interesting is Jamie gets arrested, like Braun get arrested. Actually, Braun's gonna die in this scenario. He's gonna die just flat out. Jamie gets arrested and gets thrown into a cell. Now he gets a little bit of a torch, he moves it around, and he finds out it's the same cell that Tywin Lannister was in, and Tywin was murdered and carved up within that cell. His eyes are missing. So you have dead Tywin Lannister in a cell with his son Jamie Lannister, and you hear Cersei, who apparently has been ravaged in the cell nearby. She is crying, she's crying, crying, and Jamie and her are trying to comfort each other and talking about life and death and all that kind of stuff. They're there for a couple of days, knowing that the Targaryens are coming soon enough because they want the Iron Throne eventually. They only had a truce for a short period of time. Once they're finally at the gates and they're battling against the Lannisters, Jamie's gate cracks open from his prison cell eventually, and he runs over to Cersei's, who's been shockingly quiet for the past two days or so. She's just been unwilling. Jamie's like, you know what, she's just, not feeling it anymore. She doesn't have the will to live, I guess. I don't know what it is. And when he goes to open it, he's all urgent and he sees that Cersei has slashed her throat with a random piece of rock inside of the jail cell. So Cersei Lannister dies. Jaime gets in there still and he just cradles her in sadness. Just that's how you leave him from that camera scene. But what we see is eventually the forces of Daenerys Targaryen going into the Iron Throne room and Euron, who's unwilling to yield at this point, he pops up, he threatens the forces that include Daenerys at this point because it was a clean sweep victory. Daenerys didn't have to really be worried about being killed or anything like that because she had so many people around her that would protect her, including Jon Snow. 
Euron threatens and is ready to go kill. And when he goes to finally thrust and run forward, Jamie Lannister out of nowhere stabs him in the back and murders him. Of course, echoing the fact that he killed the Mad King, killing sort of another Mad King in a way, kills them and falls over seemingly dead. We don't actually resolve what happens with Jamie after this point in the story. We assume that he's dead, but we don't know. I'm gonna leave it like that for that character. Daenerys finally sits on the Iron Throne. She sits on it and it actually works out beautifully. Jon doesn't have to kill her, just like on the show. Thank God that doesn't have to actually happen. They go on and they live happily for a little bit at least. Most of King's Landing wasn't burnt down like it ended up playing out during season eight. So there's not a lot to rebuild. So basically they get to live together. Daenerys births a child um, from Jon and herself. They get married properly. The secret is pretty much kept because the Starks are on board. They don't think Daenerys is crazy anymore. So they have that going on. Sansa rules the North. Not independently, unfortunately. Um, eventually I could see a skirmish coming up for that and Daenerys is getting ready. But that's where a group of conspirators comes in about a year and a half later where they end up killing Daenerys Targaryen anyway. Now it doesn't necessarily involve Jon, but it does happen. Jon gets installed as the new king with his child and Jon is going to raise it and the North will finally become independent under Jon. And basically the story will kind of go on from there, living out um, the lives of all these different characters that really were alive by the end of it all. So hooray, Westeros is saved. Tywin lives a lot longer. Tommen comes out of nowhere, becomes the MVP of the story, I think. And uh, it's generally a pretty decent time. And it's all because Oberyn Martell would have lived in this scenario instead of being killed by the mountain. So I think it's really cool. What do you think of this scenario? Do you think it's a little far-fetched? Do you think it's pretty cool? Let me know down below in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you about what you thought of this Game of Thrones what if scenario. And of course, always leave your suggestions of some other videos that you may want me to do, and I will gladly look into doing some of those as well. Otherwise, hope you have an amazing day, everybody. Take care, and goodbye, everyone.